Morning folks, it's Andy here from Air Bushcraft. Hope you're having a nice day and welcome to another video. So I've received a fair few questions lately about my fire slash maintenance pouch and what I keep inside it, etc, etc. So I thought while I'm out and about today, I'll do a video on it. Let's have a look. So this is my fire slash maintenance pouch. It's made of a 14 inch circular patch of brown leather. It's about one millimeter thick. It's got holes punched around it about every one to one and a half inches. And then paracords weave through those holes. And then it's just got a plastic cord draw closure on it. So let's open up and have a look. I mean, so as you can see, it opens up pretty wide. So first thing I'll talk about is the fire side of things. So in here I've got a big patch of birch bark and usually what I do is I gather a big square patch of it, trim it down if needs be and then I'll keep it in there, shave pieces of it off and then what I'll do is I'll put that onto like a little ember pad and then put that onto my fireplace to strike and then that way I can put this back inside the pouch and I've still got it. I don't have to keep gathering a new piece every single time and if needs be I can just rip a strip off the side like that just to add to the fire if it starts to struggle. So that's the first thing. What I also keep in here is a big stick of fat wood. This is a piece of, that I've harvested from a, a dead Scots pine tree. It's actually not too far from here. It's fallen over for whatever reason, it's torn open and on the inside of it there's just tons of this. You can take big chunks of it home and just process it down. So that's a piece from that. I also carry a small bit of lighter. It's just one of those precautions I think you should take. I also have a small ferro rod. This is the first ferro rod I ever used. As you can see it's pretty worn down now. But um, I've got my main one that I keep on my belt that I made myself. This one just stays as a, a backup one on my fire pouch for that just in case scenario. So what I have in this little tin here, it's just a screw top tin. Are little homemade fire cakes. They're just uh, what they're called makeup remover pads, and I soak them in some methylated spirit. Then I melt down some petroleum jelly, soak them in that, and then I coat them in a, a layer of just just normal candle wax. I can usually fit about six of them in here, and they're just for emergencies. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. This little tin, I've used that a few times in my videos now. This is my little charwood tin. It's just an old Altoids tin. Get pieces of punk wood from the woods, put it in. Little hole punched in the top of the lid there. And then what I do is just put it in the fire. Leave it in there for about maybe 30, 40 minutes. And then it'll char the wood for you. And then this will just take a spark. Just take a piece, your ferro rod, put a spark into it put it into your tinder bundle and then you blow it into flame. It's a really good way of making fire. So here I just have a small chunk of beeswax. I use this for waxing up my bow drill strings. In this little bag here, it used to be white, but what I, <laughs> what I keep in it, it's just a small pot skewerer. And I'll do my dishes with that when I'm out and about. Could probably do with getting changed actually. I've had that one in there for a while now. Small roll of duct tape there. I should have mentioned this is more for my maintenance side of things. So the pot scour are for maintaining my pots and that when they're dirty and need a, need a clean after use. Again duct tape, this is maintenance. This is for if I get any small tears with my tarp. I could just do a temporary fix while I'm out and about with this and then until I can repair it properly when I get home, if I can repair it anyway. Here I have some brown threads. I just made this little H bracket thing out of a piece of wood. 
wrapped a ton of brown thread around it and it's got a, a couple of needles there. That's just for clothing repairs, so if I've got any rips in my clothes or any other kit that I can use needle and thread to fix, that's what it's for. And here I have a small fold with a knife. Just for general tasks, if I need to do any food prepping, I usually use this knife. I won't use my, my Enzo Bushcrafter, I'll just use this. Also good, it's got a really sharp spine, so it's good for striking ferro rod as well. But what I keep in here is my sharpening stone. And it's called a Rupee sharpening stone. You can get them off eBay for about six ninety nine. They come from China. It's about the size of a DC4 sharpening stone and it's rated as a 3000 grit stone and it's really good because you don't need water or oil to use it, you can just use it dry and I'm not going to lie to you, I've, I've never put a better edge on my knife or any knife that I sharpen with this compared to another stone, it surpasses them all as far as I'm concerned so yeah uh, if there's a piece of kit I could recommend to you it's this, get yourself on eBay, type in ruby sharpening stone and this will come up for about £6-ish. That includes potion packaging. Yeah, good piece of kit, this. And the last thing I have in here is my strop. This is sort of my dedicated strop. I use this out in the fields, but also at home as well. I don't have one for each job. At the minute, I'm planning on making a smaller one for, for this kit. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But yeah, it's, it's exactly what it looks like. It's a piece of wood with some leather glued on top of it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video about my fire maintenance kit. I hope you found it useful and uh, answered any of the questions for the people who have asked specifically about it. In the future, I'm planning on doing a few more of these types of videos, these like, short videos about pieces of kit that I use. But if there's something I don't mention and you specifically want to know about it, then yeah, just, just leave a comment in the comment section about it and I'll, I'll try and get around to doing a video on it. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.